Base Hits and Banter. Welcome back, everybody. I am one of your hosts, Sam Fisher, here with my bestie. Halo. That's me. Halo's here. Halo's here. We're, we've got another week of just utter nonsense. Utter, utter nonsense, utter banties. It was a fabulous Easter weekend yeah. um, in, in college softball. Um, yeah. We had upsets, we had yeah. sweeps, we had dominating pitching performances. Yeah. What uh what stood out to you this weekend, Samu? Okay, so what stood out to me is you know how um Reese's makes all the different chocolates for the season, right? So yes. they make the Reese's eggs, which is yep. just like a Reese's peanut butter cup shaped like an egg. Right. But they also make a Reese's like a Canterbury egg where it's round. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how to do this with my hands. But it, oh my, I, oh my gosh, that's what stood out to me this weekend was how good Reese's be so doing. Tasty. How they just be doing so good. Reese's, if you're out there listening and you love softball, we love you. Huge fan. So you, you're more than welcome to come on and be a guest. Yeah. We can have a Reese's bunny egg on our, yeah, on our show, but it's so necessary to talk about, but in in the softball world, um, I, I, so much happened. I I think That's I first lot. would like to point out Texas dropped two to Oklahoma State, and yeah. it's not the weird thing that they lost two games. I mean, they've only lost five now on the season, but mm-hmm. both were shutouts. Yes, they scored zero runs in both of those losses, which yes. is wild. And two complete game shutouts by Lexi Kilfoyle, who went on and when she's healthy, I don't know that a drop ball moves more. I don't. There's not a drop ball out there that moves more than her. So heavy, in my opinion, it is. It is. It weighs as much as the Titanic. Like that's how heavy it is. It, it is sinks. just. And it does sink. Okay. <laughs> Happy <R>. Easter. <laughs> But seriously, like it's it's unbelievable. And by the way, that was the first time Texas has been shut out all year. Yes. And the second time Texas yes. has been shut out all year. Like if it's so good you did it once, you might as well do it again. Yeah. Like she she was absolutely unbelievable. Believe she was named pitcher of the week this week. Um, rightfully so. I don't know yeah. who else could have thrown better um in the college softball world. But yeah, that was yeah. extremely impressive. And Texas is I they play Oklahoma. This weekend, yeah, and they do. so very interested to see. That's a really tough six, seven game stretch, whatever it is for them. Mm-hmm. Really interested to see how they respond yeah. because we know they have firepower, mm-hmm. but like, can you get all of those people flying in the same direction? I th- that's going to be something that's really, really interesting to watch. Yeah, you're. Oh my gosh, you said it. I, I'm sorry. I'm still on the Titanic reference. That's so sorry. <laughs> anyway why did uh, why was the first thing that i thought like oh let's think of something super heavy and why was it the titanic i don't know i don't know just a boat just a really big large boat that was you know built in the early 1900s it was proven to be very heavy proven yeah big 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 Um, big shout out there so some other some other softball related things um what i thought um duke sweeping virginia tech that yeah that was that's a big sweep do do you know where duke lies on the top 25 right now they gotta be top five right number two two. holy macaroons yeah let's freaking go duke yeah that that's like the top five as it stands right now is oklahoma duke georgia tennessee texas Wow. so i love that for duke Georgia, um, Arkansas took the series win over Georgia in Athens. Weekend. Yes, like that's tough to do. And Arkansas ranked twenty, Georgia ranked three, and uh, Arkansas took the series. Very impressive. Very impressive. We were yeah. watching like we were watching that game Monday night, and we had we got to shout out our women's basketball counterparts here because women, women's basketball is having a moment. Yep, right now. Caitlin Clark was on absolute fire. Yep. Great game, Iowa LSU. And East Coast K-Dog and I were watching. We had basketball on one TV, and then we rolled out our TV, (laughs) our second TV, put it on a mobile TV stand, and had our second TV watching Arkansas and Georgia. And 
I got to say, like, I did not think Arkansas was going to win this series to begin with. And I really thought Georgia would come out just and like blow them out of the water in the rubber match game yeah. on Monday night. Boy, was I wrong. And big Boy. shout out to Danielle Gibson, who you know, she was at Georgia for a year. Mm-hmm. She goes back to her school. She takes a job at, you know, where she went to school and broke however many oh. records she wrote at Arkansas, every single Hit one the of them. Grand Slam cycle. Anyway, Woo pig suey. Like cycle. one of the, yeah. like one of the best humans, like one of the best coaches, best hitting minds that's out there. Hannah Gamble hit two home runs Monday night. Yeah. She had five RBIs and she scored two runs herself. They won eight to two. The, it it wasn't close. Like Georgia fought yeah. back for a yes. little bit after Arkansas jumped out to an early lead, and you kind of thought, okay, like George, okay, Georgia's gonna have their moment now, whatever. Yes. And they and the Hogs said, absolutely not. No, sweet and for you. The the, the balls, the balls that they were hitting were shots even their outs i felt like were really loud outs you can tell they were really prepared when they stepped in the box they knew what was going on they it almost felt like they knew what pitches were coming in a way and i think that's just a testament to to our friend gibby and her getting them prepped and ready but their pitching staff did a great job too holding georgia's offense is incredible all year yeah what a fun series their highest um ranked series win in program history by the way amazing pretty cool and to do it on the road in Athens. Yeah, in oh, tough place to play. You love to see it. Um, I do have another upset I'd love to shout out with a little please. Little, uh, Boston College upset Clemson four to zero. I a shutout. Yeah, that's hard. Unreal. To be beating anybody, you know, but Clemson shoot. That Sweet. was. I think we talked about this last week. Sweeps are so hard. Hard. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you're playing. It doesn't matter how low they're ranked, how high they're ranked. For you to beat right. someone three times is really hard. Yeah. Arkansas played out of their minds all weekend, still didn't get the sweep. Right. Oklahoma State played out of their minds all weekend, still didn't get the sweep. Yep. Like Washington, all year long, up until this week, like has yet to been able to get a sweep. They finally yeah. get the sweep this weekend against Oregon State. Yeah. But like it's so hard to beat someone three times. And yeah. I think that's just a test. Like Boston College, good for you. Sticking yep. in there, scrappy. Yeah. And to do that shutout fashion. Yeah. I and love that. Not one to zero, four to zero. Like they, four they to zero. Handle that it. game. Yeah. Commanded Handle that it. game. Love to see it. I'm glad you, I'm glad you threw in that Washington pulled out the sweep. Cause I was like, they gotta be, we gotta tell, we gotta tell the people like they did it. They, they did, did it. it. They got the it, sweep. I, I feel bad. It was against Oregon state. Cause I love me. Laura Berg so much. We're big Laura Berg fans Beavers always, but um, yes. yeah, they finally did it. And game three was one to zero in nine innings. So they, Somehow they that game three. Fought, they, they, fought, they fought. They fought. They fought. scratched. They clawed. Yep. They finally got the sweep. Yep. But freaking awesome. Uh, LSU also swept Texas A&M this week. That they did after a rough yeah. week last week. So rough week last week. Very big turnaround. Got us. I did not think that was going to be a sweep. I think that was yeah. probably the moral of my weekend this weekend. All the, what I thought was going to be sweeps weren't sweeps, <laughs> and things I didn't think were going to be sweeps ended up being sweeps. But LSU, yeah. LSU looked really impressive. Taylor Pleasance is such a gem of yeah. a human being she spent some time with the national team plays a great shortstop but for her yeah. to have that walk-off home run after she's kind of been struggling a little bit in sec yeah. play that yeah. was a really really cool moment Pretty sweet. um yeah and a- a&m's been playing great too so yeah good, yes they have good Pitching for the Anthony, like all the way around they've had a strong game this year very complete and all but, those all three all three of those games are extremely close yes too. right which is oh it's just hard oh, so hard <laughs> Um, I did want to give a little shout out to Iowa's Jalen Adams. She threw a no-no mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. state. Super exciting. I just, you know, you got to call out those big softball moments, no matter if it's the first or the hundredth in program history. It's still, that is, it's hard to do to throw a no hitter. I've never done it, um, Same. but I can speak of being involved in them. It is hard because it doesn't matter who you're playing, if they're the best team, the worst team, to to get everybody out. All it's crazy. No and th- and think about how many times, like, our game is so funny, right? And, like, you can hit a line drive so hard right at someone, yeah. but you get jammed or you hit a ball at the end of your bat, and that's what falls for a single. Yeah. So for all of that, to not only are you pitching well and throwing well, but for you to have all the luck on your side for your defense to play that way behind yeah. you – 
Yes. Super impressive. And I do think, like, obviously the pitcher gets a ton of credit for no hitters, yeah. but the defense has to play a complete 100%. game behind them as well. Um, what what a cool moment. What a yeah. cool moment. I love that. I love that for her. And That's so great. What a weekend. We had a great recap. That was a great that was weekend. That was a great recap. I do. Could we give a shout out to um, – Miss uh, Kennedy from Stanford, who yeah. happened to hit her first career home run. I love that. She's this so weekend. good at softball. So it's, first of all, unbelievable. Like when I saw it, reminded me of when Georgina Corrick, also friend of the program, yeah, shows up for Great Britain and hits an absolute tank yeah. over in a world yeah. championship qualifier. And you're like, oh my gosh, she hits and she's super athletic. Can do yeah. it all. it's like we knew this but she steps in the box she gets her first career home run mind you um she had 20 k's on the weekend she was 2-0 and she had a zero era she only gave up seven hits four walks in 12 innings pitched so so just doing it all just doing it all go stanford go card that yeah. was a cool. right look we're gonna we gotta we gotta talk to her we need to talk to her somebody get big her on fans. the program big fans Oh man. Wow. Okay. Great. That was a great finish to a sweet recap. Um, I did want to mention that although Halo and I are in different wardrobe today, Halo representing yeah. the darkness that comes from making Titanic references. And I've got my old alma mater LMU softball BP top on here. But if you guys want to wear some USA softball stuff that we wear, As please you should. go check out usasoftballstore.com for gear. Right now, you can use code BHB15 and get 15% off your entire purchase. And and then show us, because then we'll match. And then we love that. I mean, I'm kind of in the right colors, but you know what? You are. Doing? You are. I am not. Just pray for my soul. Yes, the darkness. It. It's, it's just a little dark over here right now, you know? In Florida, the state of the sun. <sighs> it's literally right. sunny and 75 outside right now. It's but so nice. don't worry, I'm wearing an all-black hoodie. These things make sense. These things they make do. sense. They do. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the old mental health? We'll get a little banty balance up in here. Yeah, let's really do our banty balance here. And I think balance yes. is a perfect word for today because we're talking yes. about making sure we're taking care of our mental health in our busy lives. And I think yes. this is such a good topic for both of us to speak on as you yeah. know, we have ventured into full-time jobs. Yeah, yeah. Taking on this podcast, getting to chit chat with each other and have a lot of banter, still playing professional yeah. softball, making yeah. sure we're taking care of our bodies and training and do all of doing all of those normal things. Yeah. So we kind of you and I kind of are working like three full time jobs right now. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Little so bit. we're a little busy. So yeah. I would love to know, Sam, how how do you do it? Like, how do you do it all? How do you take care of yourself? How do you give yourself grace? And yeah. just all of the different things that you're doing. Yeah, it's a great question because you're right. This is perfect for us right now. We're the, we have you know people have full plates, and I think we've got like a Thanksgiving platter. We've <laughs> got cool. we've got our buffet. Our buffet table is just <laughs> full. Um, you know what's funny is, and if if Amanda Chittister is out here out there listening, she always tells me, "Say no, Sam. Say mm -hmm. no." And mm -hmm. there's times where I realize, you know what, like I need, I, I need to say no, even though I've already said yes, maybe next time I need to say no. So that comes mm -hmm. with things like anything extra or anything on top of the things that I already need to do. So for example, like I need to hit the gym. I need to hit, I need to do the work on, on the full-time job stuff, right? What do I mm -hmm. need to do? And then what can I fill in if there's extra or extraneous or any miscellaneous items, you know, mm -hmm. and making sure that I'm taking care. It's a lot. It, it reminds me of being a student athlete now, honestly, having yeah. a job and, and, and being a player is like just bringing it back to the LMU days where I had to get some things done. And then there were spaces if I wanted to do something else. Now there is always a choice to do nothing in those spaces. Like yesterday, Yesterday was pretty busy. I was, you know, we were off work, but there, I had a few things I needed to take care of to get ready for the week. Reggie mm -hmm. had physical therapy, like most dogs do. <laughs> and there was a point where I was like, you know what? I have 20 minutes right now. I sat on the couch and I fell asleep for about 18 minutes and it Deserved. was beautiful. And I got up and I went about and did the rest of my day. And I know that if I would have tried to shove something into that 20 minutes, 
I would have just been wrecked. And it, yeah. you know, it, it gave me the little boost that I needed to go about the rest of my day. But I love that. prioritizing, making lists. I know you said you like to make lists about your whole day, which I Have love. To. Have I to. love that. But making, I think making sure that what you're doing aligns with what you a need to be doing, but also what you want to be doing. You know, there's, there's times where I remember when I was younger, social events or social things would come up and I'd be like, dang, I gotta go to this or shoot. There's things where I'm like, I can't, I can't do that today. Or I can't do that this weekend. Like, can we do it this time instead? You know? Um, so just kind of, creating your own boundary for yourself, I think is truly an answer, but what, tell me more about, about what you do to balance it all. 1000%. I think for me, I I, setting boundaries and saying no is really important because I think what I've had to accept in the last few years is that I can't do everything. And if I try to do everything, the quality of what I do is going to go Mm -hmm. in the tank and sink like some other stuff, like let's see kill phones drop all right. So, but I, I've been, I, I read a book recently. It's called slow productivity by Cal Newport. And if you haven't read Cal Newport, I highly encourage you to read really any of his books. He's a fabulous author. He's a computer science professor. Um, but he talks about all things time management and eliminating Mm -hmm. distraction and what like productivity actually means. And I think we Mm -hmm. get so caught up, especially as young women, we feel like we have to hustle. We have to work. We have to always kind of be doing something. And it's like, I had to ask myself the question, am I being productive or am I just pretending to be busy? Oh my God. Like, am I, like, am I actually doing something that's going to move the needle forward in some sort of aspect of my life? Or am I just like taking up, time and pretending to be busy and pretending to be productive and so in this book cal newport talks about three things on actually how to be productive it's doing less working at a natural pace and then obsessing over quality and so i was like oh my gosh it's like my busyness is like i'm just kind of making i'm i might be just making this up in my mind mm-hmm. whereas now i'm like okay i have like three or four things i want to prioritize today i'm going to knock those out and i'm going to absolutely obsess over the quality of which i do them i'm not going to try to juggle five things at once mm-hmm. i'm going to sit down i'm going to focus on okay i'm filming the podcast with sam today how can I bring mm-hmm. the best possible quality in this hour that we have together? How can I bring the best possible quality mm-hmm. distraction free into that? Okay, mm-hmm. I'm making pitches at Athletes Unlimited. How can I bring the best possible quality into this sales pitch so people will wow. invest money in us? That would be so nice, right? <laughs> I'm going to training. I, how can I invest all of my time, all of my focus, wow. all of my energy into this one thing? And what I have realized is I actually feel more productive and better overall by doing less. I don't feel like I'm doing 15 million things uh, all at once. It's just like I'm bouncing from thing to thing to thing. So I th- I think it's okay to slow down. Yeah. Like write out your list, pick three or four things you want to execute that day and get it done. And if something can't get done today, give yourself some freaking grace. It's okay. It's totally okay. Yeah. The world is not moving as fast as you think it is. Mm-hmm. it's really it's really not so yeah take a step back slow that's down great. yeah and just Ugh. do le- do less and do things at a really high quality and when yeah. you're when you do something so well people are not going to ignore you yeah yeah that's true and and like you know you hear the the phrase like spreading yourself thin and what that means is where you're like i can't give a quality amount of myself to this task because I've given so much of myself to those 40 other meaningless tasks that exactly now I get here and I'm going to hit off the T and I'm like, I don't, I don't have it today. And it's not because exactly. I don't have it. It's because I gave it away. <laughs> exactly. Sure. Don't give it away. Don't yeah. give it away. Keep it That's, with you. I love that. I like the priorities. I like the slowing down and, and you talk about it all the time in your physical preparation of quality reps over quantity. And yeah. that, that applies to it everything. Have you, have you read Atomic Habits? I have phenomenal book. Outstanding. I love it. And I love where it's like feeling like you need to slow down or feeling like you need to do less. Sometimes, like you said, you need to give yourself grace. Like sometimes people feel like they need to be doing something all the time. 
And at the end of the day, it's like, no, sometimes you can attack little bite size without even realizing it. Like, like making sure that you have an empty sink before you go to bed instead of, oh, now I have a task to do tomorrow of the dishes. Like exactly. kind of just attacking things as they, as they are and as they come instead of like piling, piling, piling. And then all of a sudden you're overwhelmed. You have 400 things to do in one day. And now you're, ta- you're you, the things you need to do fall behind or the exactly. quality, like you said, might fall, fall behind. So exactly. Excellent topic exactly. today. Halo. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm feeling inspired. Yeah. I love that. That, that happens most of the time when I talk to you anyway. So that's, that's what happens on this podcast. You get some balance in your life and then you're inspired yeah. to go out and just attack yeah. all of the fun stuff that, yeah. that you do in your, yeah. in your day to day. It's great. That's, that's, that's what we do on the base hits and banter, banty balance. Yeah. So, which is great. That's, that's right. We're going to do, we're going to do a seamless transition. Boom, baby. Into our um, HPP and national team news. Uh, yes. Sam, would you, would you like to share some stuff that's going on with the HPP? Yeah, I would love that. I'm going to channel my inner halo and my announcer voice <laughs> just so everybody's prepared. Um, April is going to be a busy month for identifiers. We have Marietta, Georgia is coming up this weekend, April 7th, and there's walk-up registration currently going on. So you can walk up if you don't get a chance to you know, pre-register. You They do take walk-ups. And then in Rockland, California, the following weekend, April 14th, we have um an hvp up there i yours truly will be there so say hey uh Uh and then and then rounding out april we're in dallas texas april 21st so visit hvp.usasoftball.com for more information or a list of other identifiers if it's not this month maybe next month check out where you can apply so that's uh that's what's going on the hvp a little busy that is, that's really busy. It's yeah. a good thing for the HPP to be busy. So right. hopefully, hopefully all you people will get out and get to those identifiers and yes. register, sign up, come say hello to all of your fabulous uh, Team USA staff, which is exciting. Um, yes. Speaking of Team USA, yeah, there was a big announcement. Yeah. On March 29th. Yep. 2024. <laughs> USA softball. Announce the coaches that are going to join the women's national team program during the 2024 season. This, this is such a loaded staff. You guys, yeah, it's, it's absolutely, crazy. it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. So it was selected by the USA softball women's national team and junior women's national team selection committees. Yep. Ellie Crutchman, friend of the program. is going to be the head coach so of the cool. elite team assisted by Elisa Goler, Rachel Lawson, who I'm a little mad at at this current moment after the weekend they had against <laughs> Alabama, but I do love Rachel Lawson. She's a fabulous coach. Yes. And Cody Thompson, they are going to lead the women's elite team. And then Kyla Hollis will be the head coach for the junior team. Yes. The U18 women's national team, also assisted by Elisa Goler and Kelly Crutchman on that staff. So, I mean, I don't know of a better person to lead the elite team than Kelly Crutchman. You guys are going to hear a little bit about that when we get to chat with Kelly, which is yes. so exciting. Um, but I, I loved, I, I, I just love the way that Kelly leads the way that she approaches things. And I just think she's going to do an incredible job of the elite team. And Kyla is just an absolute gem of a human being leading yeah, our junior women's national team. Yeah. So some new faces on USA staffs, which I think yeah. is great. I think it's always good to get new and fresh perspectives. Yeah. But man, what a summer it's going to be. It's gonna such be a so loaded good. staff. Are you kidding? Yeah. I just, the knowledge, the the rounded experience too, you know, like where it's different. Each person has something different to bring to the table, which gives, you know, these athletes a chance to learn, to learn and, and to grow in different ways. So I'm excited to see what they do. And I think, uh, I think everybody's going to like, our guest uh, for this podcast today, because it's very relevant to that news. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, is there a mohawk involved? For sure. Gotta be. It's the best hair in all of um, <laughs> This weekend, though, we've got some big matchups. You already mentioned we've got Oklahoma and Texas. And oh, it's Austin. at Texas, so it's going to be... Oh my gosh. Austin is going to be... be wow. The yeah. burnt orange is going to be out and alive to try to beat those Sooners. And Oklahoma is playing, like, I think they lost and it's just, like, pressure's off and now they're playing. Yeah. They're playing like they, we, they do be. 
Yeah, and we haven't really talked about them that much because it's just like, oh, they're winning fifteen to nothing. Oh, they're yeah. winning eighteen to three. Like it's you know, they're just doing what Oklahoma does. So yeah. I do think I, I'm excited to watch that series. Yeah, and we'll have it. We'll have it all broken down. That, on the next that we will. Episode. That we episode. will. And we've got also another oh. big, yeah, another big matchup in the SEC this weekend. We talked about Georgia dropping the series to Arkansas this week. They are going to be at Tennessee. Yeah, this that's weekend. Good. And in the rankings, that's their their neighbors. They're ranked third and fourth. So right there. that's going to be. This might be a series that we go back to to determine who the regular season champ in the SEC is. Might be. It might be. Oh, Halo. Way to, way to give the people what they want. That's what we're here for. That's right. We're, we're, we're women of the people. Of the people. Yes. And I hope that everybody enjoys our guests. So stay tuned and have so much fun. You're going to have a blast. I'm just saying. Yeah. Holy buckets. We're foaming. Holy up. buckets. At Higginbotham, we put people first. Our specialists are here to serve you, the people you care about, and your success insurance hr and financial services inspired by you all right banties i hope you guys are excited i hope you're buckled up we've got i mean i'm biased but it's also a fact a great guest coming up halo do you want to tell the people who they're about to hear from i I am so stoked to welcome this particular guest to the show. We have, joining with us, um, a former nine-time professional all-star softball outfielder. We have a four-time NCAA All-American at the University of Alabama. We have a 2004 Olympic gold medalist and a 2008 Olympic silver medalist. We have... Literally one of only a few NCAA Division One players ever to bat 400 with 300 hits, 200 runs, and 100 stolen bases for Damn. her college career. Literally one of the best college softball players of all time. One of the best professional, if not the best professional players of all time. Two-time yeah. Olympic medalist, great human being, and an HPP icon. Kelly Crutchman, welcome to the program. Wow. wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That That was really long. That was unnecessary. I don't know what to cut out. That's the freaking problem because you played for so freaking long and you're still around softball and you've been around softball for so long. I can't, I couldn't narrow it down. So I had to give you to say the old, the old one. (laughs) Hey, the goat. That's basically, I could have just said that. The goat. Uh, The goat. Well, thank you guys for having me. Hey, listen, we love you. And she didn't mention your mohawk in the intro, so she did cut yeah. one out. The best hair in, <laughs> in all of softball. You're in the game. Uh, it's Just funny. I, I, uh, I don't know who I was talking to the other day, but they were like, man, your hair gets so many compliments. I was like, yeah. I was like, God, people used to recognize me by my all my tattoos. Now it's the hair. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> That's so funny. No, oh, it's a blonde uh... mohawk with that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> Hell, um, let's just let's just go right into it. I feel like you got some news that you want to share with the people. Well, I want you to share with the people because it's really freaking awesome and exciting. So do you want to tell people what's uh, going on in your life? Yeah, I, I absolutely would love to. So um, I, I'm really pumped and stoked about this opportunity um, because I'm like extremely passionate about wearing USA, those three letters across your chest. There you go. Um, I am going to be the, um, elite head coach of the elite team this summer for the, the USA national team, the elite team, um, which is the second team, but we're going to be going to Japan to play in a three game series, um, June 30th through July 9th. Um, so I'm really stoked about that. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I want to bring just that passion and energy and excitement back into like, you know, what it means to be wearing that those three letters across your chest. Um, and I know you three, you two know what that means and what it meant to you guys. So um, yeah, I'm just really, really pumped about it. So exciting. Yeah. It's one of the coolest things. Like, I think we're so pumped just to have your presence energy around. I know Kel, when you were helping us on the 2020 tour, it just felt like 
such a sense of relief to have your presence and your energy and just your softball mind around. So I have no doubt like what you're going to do with the elite team is going to be absolutely incredible. And um, you're going to sweep Japan when you go over there and just like kick their butts. So I'm, I'm stoked. I couldn't think of anyone better for the job. So it's awesome. Congrats. Well, I, I, I really appreciate that. And like in my interview, like that was one of the things I talked about, right. was um that we used to have this, um, the sense of like, every country being scared of us and like if it was our first team or was our second team like we we beat you and I feel like in the last couple years or you know however long it's kind of gotten away from us a little bit and like that second team has been kind of just someone that's gone over there or you know gone and played just to kind of get info or scout or you know whatever the case may be or to see players play Mm. but like I'm like no, like damn it like this is about time where we we put that fear back into every country that we have a phenomenal talent of athletes again that we can send two teams and it doesn't matter who's on both teams and we're still going to beat you. Um, Like that's the mentality that I have going into it. Um, You know, and it's funny because I called myself the captain of the elite team back in the day, because (laughs) you guys probably don't know this, but uh, I was on every elite team possible. I made one pan American team and I was on, I was an alternate 2000 for the Olympic team, but then I was on the two Olympic teams and I never made a women's national team other than that. So I know what it meant to be on the elite team. Um, What it used to mean to be on that elite team was that I was pissed because I wanted to be on that team, on the national team. Like I thought I should have been on that team. And so every game was, was, and all of us on that team, honestly, every time there was an elite team, like we had that mentality of like, we're going to prove to everyone that they made a mistake by not selecting us. Mm. And the cool thing was back then was like, we got to play the national team and some of the events, like we went yeah. to Canada cup together and stuff like that. And, you know, we beat them a couple of times. Like we beat them a couple of times to where they would take our pitchers off our team and put them. So we didn't beat them. <laughs> um, you know, that, that's the stuff that happened back in the day, but like, I want that mentality back in every athlete that joins our program like I want them to be dedicated to it now that we're back in the 28 Olympics you're kidding me the opportunity to play for your country yep in the Olympics in your country yeah like I can't even fathom how awesome that would be so like we're about to be in that quad and it's about time that people start like taking like wearing that uniform seriously and and this is going to be pretty blunt from my from obviously I'm blunt so you guys know this but like yes I want people to stop saying that I feel I'm blessed to be wearing this uniform. I feel, um, mm. you know, that I'm, what's the, the biggest word is like, I'm honored or, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm grateful, like screw being all of those. They're all great. And everyone says it. It's like the cliche words that we use for everything now, but like, I want every athlete that's selected specifically like for my team, like, no, I deserve to be in this process. Ooh. Right. Deserve. And I deserve to be on that other team. And I'm going to prove to everyone that I deserve to be on that team. So like, imagine if every single athlete had that mentality, even on the girls on the national team, it's like, no, I deserve to be here. And I'm not going to let somebody else on that other team take my spot. Then it changes the whole, it changes the whole culture. And I mean, and and I only speak that from prior experience, right? Like, cause that was our mentality, you know, Mm -hmm. and it, it brought fear in every single person that put that uniform on. Like I have to be at my best all the time. I'm not just grateful. I'm not just happy. I'm not just, you know, excited to be wearing those three letters across my chest. Like, no, I deserve this. And I'm going to make that Olympic team. I absolutely I love, that. love that. I'm, I'm, for, oh, well, I'm ready to run through a brick wall now. So that's oh great. <laughs> but I, I love what you're talking about, Kel, with the competitiveness, because it's like, yes, like we deserve to be in this spot on this national team because we've worked hard for it and earned it. Like we weren't just handed a spot. And I think that when you're talking about all of these different athletes and these teams in the, in the pool competing against each other, that's what levels everybody's expectation and levels everybody's level of play, right? That's what helps everybody get better is that, is that competition. It's not something to run away from. It's something to lean into and to take advantage of. Like, I, I think that's absolutely awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's just, it raises everyone's level of play. And yeah. imagine if every single player in our program raised their level of play, like 
no one we're already no one freaking will come good close right no one will come close to beating us right again yeah i think it comes down to like a hunger what you're talking about just reminds me of you know you know those athletes who are just out there and they're hungry and they're they they're mm you know, going out there and doing what it takes. And I do agree. I think that there's been kind of a, just in the last chunk of years across the board with, with youth, with athletes, where it's just like, oh no, this is just another tournament I go to, or, oh no, this is just a different Jersey that I wear instead of Mm -hmm. like, I am wearing USA across my chest. I even like, I've talked to Halo about this. I haven't played for team USA since 2016. And when I get to wear a USA softball shirt, it brings me so much joy, so much pride to know that it I, like this is it. This is the goal. This is the goal. Like yeah. this is the goal since you picked up a glove when you were a kid. So like having that mentality really shifts the the way you are. You present yourself on the field. Mm-hmm. Well, and two, I think there's a little bit of a um, they expect to be selected. Yes, yes, yes. and they yeah. expect. And, and again, it's the culture and it's what we've now have in our society today is that I expect this. I expect seven practice t-shirts. I expect, you know, to wear new cleats every day. You know, um, yeah. there's just this expectation that like, which now takes away from the, like, I deserve part. It's like, I expect to be there. And now I'm grateful that they did. T- like, no, like there's no expectation because there's someone else that could be replaced you could be replaced by that's the bottom line Mm -hmm. and um whether people want to like look at themselves in the mirror and and think do I want to do this or do I not want to do this like am I just grateful or am I like I'm determined to make this team or make the Olympic team you know that goes back to like the willingness to change your your habits right like your workout habits like figuring out okay like this is what I do in college, but now I'm not in that environment. How do I handle myself? All, all of those different things. And, you know, we, we have a lot of younger kids now that are in, involved in the pool. But if you just, they all just sat back and realized that I believe there's like 40 athletes in the pool right now. I could mm-hmm. be off a couple. Don't judge me on that. But there's 40 athletes out of how many people, how many, how many women play our sport yeah whether it's in college professionally whatever that is like it's a lot and then when you get down to like we have 15 athletes like 15 are gonna go play in italy this summer this summer Mm -hmm. 15 are gonna make the olympic team Mm -hmm. like 15 that's not a whole lot so if you expect you ain't making that (laughs) sorry no way because no one's going to sit there and say, oh, yeah, you know, you're, uh, I don't want to call anybody, but like you're, I'm Haley McKinney and I've been on an Olympic team before. I'm I don't want to call anybody out. My name is Haley. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, it's just, it's just that's it. how. It, it comes down to just because you say you want it doesn't mean you get it. And it's, it's like what you're saying about the expectation. Like I should just get it because I go and I play at this big school. Like I should just get to wear this Jersey and not how it works because part of the, like, I deserve to be here is I freaking earned to be here. And that I think the the disconnect of like, well, I just want it. So I should just get it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. (laughs) No. What, how did you earn it? How did you earn I think about all the conversations of like, I have scraped and crawled and and blood, sweat and tears to, to get to this point. And it goes back to like Natasha Watley saying, if you're going to, you know, talk about it, be about it. And that's at the end of the day, the, the mentality of what we're talking about, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, it, and it's funny because there's a story that um, Tariah, Nims Flowers, who was on the Olympic team with me, is Sam loves. I go Lions. Go yeah. Lions. Um, you know, she told me at the last Olympics when we were just hanging out in the hotel room, was like, she told me a story about how she, her and Lisa Fernandez were on a flight together. And for whatever reason, she went back to the bathroom and she just passed out, like passed out on the, Tria just passed out on the airplane. So she, they like, you know, got her awake and stuff. And they were like, do you have, you know, a friend on the plane that like can 
we can call on the loudspeaker and stuff. She's like, yeah, I have a friend. Her name is Lisa Fernandez. And they kept calling. They buzzed. Um, is there Lisa Fernandez on? Like, and like nothing, nothing. I don't know if she had headphones in or whatnot, but finally get to the, you know, the end of the story and, and they finally found her and they said, Hey, do you have a friend, Taraya, Taraya flower? Cause at the time she was trying men's not trying men's flowers, but, um, and Lisa, not kidding you goes, um, no, I, she, she's not my friend. She's my teammate. <laughs> yeah. So like, but I think back to playing with Lisa and doc and Michelle Smith, and, you know, even that, like, Bustos and, and you know, Lovey and Tasha and all of the people that, I, Caitlin, like, all of the people that I played with. And specifically that older group, the Lisa group, like, I think back and I'm like, you know, it makes sense. Because yeah. they didn't look at each other as friends. They were teammates. Mm. And they had to figure out how they were going to be teammates and grow together. But... Mm. They were teammates fighting for their spots, mm -hmm. fighting to be the starter, fighting to be, you know, the best, fighting to get that sponsorship. They were fighting for those things amongst each other. So heck no, they didn't look at each other as friends. They might have been friends, some of them, not Lisa, apparently. <laughs> but no, I mean, Lisa and Tariah are great now. But, you know, Tariah played for Lisa at UCLA. So for her to say, yeah. like, no, she's my teammate, like, it just struck me. I'm like, man, like. That's, that's that's why we won <laughs> yeah. you know it's like because it's true. that was the mentality and you know I don't know if it's the travel ball days that are going on right now but it's it just seems like every single person like in college it's like their best friends on the field off the field you know and that's probably social media and all that stuff but I just remember like when we played LSU I didn't want no part of talking to Brittany Sneed ever yeah, yeah. you know yeah. or you know, it's it's funny because I, I don't know if she's going to say yes or not, but I asked somebody to coach with me that I played against in the pro league um, that played at Georgia. And uh, I just remember I'm like, we hated each other on the field. Mm -hmm. But off the field, we were fine. But put us on the field, like I don't want nothing to do with her. Yeah. Like I probably yelled at her if I had to take a guess, like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> knowing me, but that, you know, that's just the mentality that, you know, I think is, is brings that back that we need to start get back into is like, nah, like yeah. I like you, you're my friend, but like, I'm still trying to take your spot. Like if I was still playing, I would look Amanda Lorenz in the face and be like, you ain't playing over me. <laughs> yeah. I will out hit you and I will outplay you. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of, you know, learning more about Michael Jordan and the way that he was with the Bulls. You you'd, you would never expect him to be like, yeah, Scotty Pippen and I go after practice, we hold hands and we go out to eat. Like, I think it comes, Halo and I have talked a lot. I mean, maybe they did eat together and, uh, but, but Halo and I have talked a lot about being a female in, in sport and being a high level mm -hmm. athlete as a female. And I think you see some of that expectation of being like, well, everything you like sunshine and rainbows, those girls out there just doing it. And with their friends, it's like dog, like regard male or female, we are competitors and you're out there competing to win. And mm -hmm. that at the end of the day comes before, do you make friendships along the way? Absolutely. You can't yes. deny that. But when the priority is to win and to be the one on the field to help do that, that's a different mentality than yeah, that's my pal. Like, oh, I you totally. play because I, I love you so much. You you go, you have it. Mm -mm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Wedding. totally. I'm Pat, Kelly, have you heard of the term toxic positivity? Whoa. Mm -hmm. Because okay, so I think like everything that you're talking about right now, like that's it's all I can think about. I, Sam, maybe we had this conversation at Athletes Unlimited at some point because like I think culture and society and just everything with social media and all of that. It's like, it's stay optimistic, stay positive. Like, yeah. And I think we can get lost in that and it can become toxic because we choose to choose positivity over reality. Uh -huh. And when that happens, we lose accountability. And when that happens, we lose competitiveness. And so like everything you're talking about, I think just comes from a point of like being real and like, not being afraid to say hard things because at the end of the day, like, yes, are those conversations going to be super difficult to have? 
yeah, is like fighting and going head to head with your teammates in a super competitive way always fun? Like when you win, it's fun, but when you yeah. lose, you're really mad and you like don't want to talk. Like that's how I am at least. And you want to like just crawl in a shell and whatever. And it's like, oh, I need like 24 hours before I can look at you again. But that's that's what makes you better. And you have to be like real and authentic with it. So like, I don't know. There are a lot of people I think that are listening to to this podcast and this show of like, I'm assuming that are listening to what you're saying. And it's like, yes, 100%. This is what I want to do. But like, how do I do it? And you're someone that works like you work in the HPP. You see these young athletes. You've coached in the pro leagues. You played in the pro leagues. Like, how do you like on a tangible level? Like, how do you implement this stuff? What would your advice be? One, you got to know who you are as, mm. as a person, oh. like period. If, if you can't be honest with yourself, then you probably shouldn't be trying to be honest with other people because, you know, a lot of people can oh see my. through. Oh, <laughs> so well, <I> mean, most, <laughs> okay. most people can see through you. Like, yep. you know, like if, if you're preaching about, well, you know, run that out harder or like make a better throw but you're not holding yourself accountable and not, not like looking at yourself. Like, did you do that? Did you do it a hundred percent? Because as athletes, we don't want to hear from those people. Like we want to hold, we want to hear from the people that are doing it themselves. Right. So that's the first thing is like, know what, what, who you are as a person. And then two, you know, I think coaches need to kind of do a better job of this, but like knowing your role. Right. So if you don't understand what your role is, ask, I would ask your coaches what your role is because I think it's easier to know who you are, how you need to be, like what your expectations are if you know what your role is. Like if my role is to be the best freaking pinch rudder in the world, then that's what I'm going to buy 100% into and I'm going to and I'm mm. going to do. And then that uh, enables you to hold everyone else accountable to what you're doing. Like that's my role, so I'm going to hold everyone else to be a better base runner. You know, yeah. I, I think there's little things um, you know, that that can help you be able to do that. And the other thing is too, is like, we're women. We're so worried about what people think about us. Like, if you want to win, you have to stop worrying about, am I going to upset my friend? Am I going to hurt her feelings? Like, if she's, first of all, if she's your friend, <laughs> she shouldn't be hurt by what you say to her. Like right. if it's going to help her and help the team be better, you know? Yeah. So getting over those little things, I think will help, you know, it's crazy to think about, but like how many people have you guys played with that has like honestly and openly like held you accountable to be a better athlete, to be a better softball player? Like has anyone ever flat out told you, Hey, like you need to make a better throw or like, Hey, I don't yeah. like the way you filled that ground ball. I feel like we're going to lose a gold medal because of it. Like, I need you to be better at it. Like, those are hurtful things, right? Yeah. yeah. But if you take a step back and say, either A, screw you, I'm going to show you. <laughs> right. Or like, okay, I'm going to make a better throw and then you can just shut up. You know, like that type of mentality instead yeah. of be like, oh, she picked on me. Oh my God, she thinks that I'm going to, cost us a gold medal like but that's what we do right yeah so it's like you know I've been trying to preach to these to some of these younger kids like you're gonna have a negative thought right yep actually but how fast can you have that positive thought mm -hmm. that's the difference in being a top tier athlete and yeah. an average athlete yeah. you know I, you say you suck you suck you suck you suck you suck like what do you think is gonna happen but if you say you suck and then you say, damn it, I'm going to hit the crap out of you next time. Period. Most likely th that's what's going to happen. Like, and, Halo, you're the, you know, it's, you have that mentality. I know you do. And Sam, I'm not saying you don't, but Halo, like you could just, it's written all over your face. Like, yeah. Every pitch, I don't hide my like, emotions very well. No, you know, and if people watch AU, like see you freaking swing through a pitch or you just you give a look at the picture and it's like we're like the same person because it's the same thing i would do you're like oh you better not throw that there again because it's getting yeah. hard Horror. and it might go right back at you and i'm sorry right <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry not, not sorry sorry. <laughs> sorry not sorry i'm gonna take yeah. my single or double but yeah sorry yeah. not. Sorry. i've so, seen a wink out of halo every now and then like a okay like good pitch try throwing it again yeah. right exactly but how many kids don't 
think that way. Yeah. No. You know? They're like, oh, I just let a fatty go. We all let fatties go. Come on. But yeah, like, dang, you throw that there again, I'm going to hit it. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Halo, you want to wrap us up? You got any good nuggets? I mean, you always do a good job of asking the final final thoughts. Yeah. I Kel, like, I, I, we could talk to you, for, I think, for like three hours. And I think yeah. so many people would just get so much from you like so much wisdom um but i i I like asking this question because i think it just puts like a good little bow on things but if you could give any advice to your younger self what would it be and why Mm. oh man i love when she does this i know yeah Uh, it's it's funny because i I think about now that i'm like trying to preach things to younger athletes i think about this question (laughs) probably more often than not um but man I was that stubborn kid right that was like good enough to do whatever I wanted and didn't have to really work hard like I really make people like Sam angry (laughs) who hit 500 balls and take 100 ground because they want to be (laughs) the best they possibly can be whereas I'm the younger me is like that's a waste of time like what are you doing you know Mm -hmm. um but looking back now, it's like, I think about like how good I was, but now I have that thought of like, how great could I have been? And wow. I know I was good, but like, you were great. I still are great. But like, how much better could I have been? And it might not have been like, so extreme of like, I'm jumping off the charts uh, difference, but like, I could have been a little bit, maybe a little bit faster. I could have, you know hit 450 instead of four, you know, there, there's just different things that like, I just see now that I'm like, I could have been embedded. That's probably the best, most easy thing for me to talk about is the whole in shape thing. Uh, yeah. I hated working out. I hated running. I hate, you know, still hate running, but if I have to yeah. do it, I'll do it. Just hold that whole piece and how much it could change my game. I think that's probably the younger me is like, don't be so stubborn. Uh, yeah. Be open minded to everything. Mm. And be willing to change or try and change and figure out what works for me. Uh-huh. That's probably the, the two things that I'm like, man, because a lot of these kids, I say kids, but a lot of these women are coming from these colleges and they've been taught how to hit a certain way. Uh-huh. Yep. And it's all great. But once you leave that system, how do you survive? Right. Oof, and to me, the yeah. best way you could do that is by paying attention to what everyone else is doing and taking little nuggets from everyone mm-hmm. and trying them, the willingness to try them to see if that helps you grow. Because if you're, if you're just still living in that college world, you ain't, you guys know, you ain't going to grow. Yeah. You're just going to sink yeah. and you're going to get lost in the shuffle. And then there you go. You're not a softball player anymore. Probably right. like a lawyer or a <laughs> CPA or something making more money than us but <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, but yeah so that'll probably be it no that's beautiful amazing. i think it's amazing especially hearing from somebody who has achieved so much where you're like how like could i have been better like i think that at the end of Crazy. the day a really cool piece of advice coming from somebody like you so that's awesome our banties will love it yes i hope so yes hope thank so. you so much kel for joining us and for all the wisdom you shared we love you. No problem at all. I can't, I, I would be in trouble if I didn't talk about the HPP program real quick. Go. Go ahead so right guys, now. Join the HPP program. It's our high performance program where we're trying to grow the national teams program at a younger, a younger age group level. So we're, we have 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s, 17 and 18s. We're naming a national team for each age group. The WBSC is having younger um, international tournaments now. For different age groups like we just had our 15 team that won the first wp vsc uh world cup for 15s Woo-hoo! uh we're oh. having the 18s are having a team this coming this coming summer to qualify for the 18 world cup um so get involved um come join us learn what it means to wear usa across your chest and yeah that's that's my soapbox about that well said well you heard it here, folks you heard it here holy buckets <laughs> Team USA has brought me opportunities that I never thought I would have before. 
and super humble to be able to represent my country. There's so much talent in the United States playing softball right now, and we want to see the, the game continue to grow and prosper and develop. I want to develop not just men, but women's softball as well. I want to see more girls like me playing this sport. I just hope one day that I can be somewhat mentioned, like a Natasha Watley, to help this game. I just remember like watching everyone like, in the Olympics, like, and you guys just representing this country. And for me, playing USA softball, like, I just want to do the same.